So then we have to then say, well, what the heck is this app thing? Well, app comes from app svelte. So let's just go look. I'll close some things there. So here's app svelte. And by the way, let's let's blow people's minds. If you haven't tried this in VS Code, there's a feature called Zen Mode. Have you used that, Christopher? I have. Um, I, I know that this makes me relatively unique. I'm, I, I don't know why. I'm just not a fan of Zen Mode. It's definitely something to get used to. Let's show people what it is, get to kind of see where it is, and we can come out of there. If you hit F1, it brings up the command palette. I can type Zen Mode, and there's a keystroke for it, too, and go there. And it just shows people. It's like, it's like a distraction-free mode. Mm. So we can only see the thing we're looking at. Uh, and we'll stay here for a minute, and then we'll come back out. Uh, this is the app component, the main root component. And there's a couple things in here. You'll notice first that I'm exporting a name. It's a variable, which says world. So you can imagine I've got hello world, and I can change the thing from world to Christopher. Mm -hmm. I've also got a hero object. It's just plain JavaScript, where I've got a hero called Landon, and he, my son is 104 years old, apparently. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> You look pretty good for having a son that's that's 104 years old. Especially since I was born apparently 22 years ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's our heroes: myself, my wife, and my dog. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> just some basic, you know. Uh, we got a variable, we have an object, and we've got an array, just to kind of show the different things that we have. And then that's the code. Now, if I take that, you can see the code. Then here's our HTML and here's our CSS. Opening up the HTML, we've got hello name. Remember, name is the variable called world by default. Mm -hmm. We've got some basic HTML down here. And then we've got this thing called heroes list. This is where it gets cool. Like you can take heroes list component that is showing a list of those heroes, Luke Skywalker, et cetera, R2D2. And that component's in another file. And what we're doing is saying, go take that other component and put it into this spot on the HTML page. So this main gets put in the body because we learned about that just a moment ago. And then inside of the main, the hero's list gets put inside there. And so creating a component is, is sort of like then just creating your own cool HTML tag. Yes, it's exactly an HTML tag. And you wonder, how does it know? Does the browser know what that is? That tag never goes to the browser that tag is effectively replaced before it gets there because here's the hero's list. And what we do is we come up here, it says, what is that? It's coming from this other file, which I think I can hover over. And now I'm in, I, I hovered over it, hit control or option and hit uh, my mouse. Now notice I'm in hero's list cell. It's a different component. Mm -hmm. And in here, again, just to show folks, we've got our code. We then have our HTML, which should have a, down arrow there. Oh, I don't have a wrapper. That's why. Uh, if I put all this inside like a div, there'd be a wrapper. So we've got our code up here, a bunch of funky things going on, which we'll explain, and then our CSS. In the code itself, notice the hero list also has a hero detail. So we can constantly build our, what we call a component tree, because it's taking components inside of components inside of other components, and thus we have an application. Mm -hmm. So here I've got an empty variable called selected hero. Uh, I have a get heroes function, which goes out and gets my heroes across the API. Uh, and it's a promise because it's asynchronous. So I have a promise to wait for it until it comes back. Get heroes is just an async function. Again, all just JavaScript. And I'm using the fetch API, which this bears us talking about for a minute, Christopher, because the fetch API is built into the browsers. So Historically, we've used things like Axios or in Angular, we use the HTTP client APIs. We pull in other libraries or in jQuery even, <laughs> you know, to go get <laughs> our data. We can now just use the fetch API that's baked into the browser, which also makes the app smaller. And then we get the data back, there's a response. We await the response, we await the fetch. This gets us the JSON, the data. And it happens to be inside the data is not just the uh, results, but there's also like error messages and status codes. And so we pull the data out and then we have a list of heroes, which if we come down to our heroes list, and I'll just show you the uh, then, there's this really cool syntax in Svelte that says, anytime you see this curly brace, 
something's going on with svelte. <clears throat> and then the curly brace means there's a svelte command coming. What this one says is we're actually going to do an await on the hero promise. We don't have the array of heroes yet. So to get those, we're going to await for that promise to resolve. And when that promise resolves, we're going to get the hero list. But while it's not resolving, like let's say this takes three seconds to run, it's actually going to display heroes are in a galaxy far, far away. It's like a loading indicator, right? And then the second curly brace says, okay, this is related to the await. We say colon then. The colon's basically a continuation. It says there's a command running this await. And when that's resolved, take the results and stick them in a variable called heroes. That's the array of heroes. And then here inside this UL, I'm creating a LI item, list item, where I go each of the heroes, I replace it with a hero variable, and then we just display those on the screen with hero.name. And it even has error handling here, like you can do a catch statement of, okay, the heroes didn't come and you can display something um, fun, fun to me. <laughs> the Sith have wiped out the heroes, opa. Uh, so that's kind of what happens to go get the data. And this is a little bit more than a 101, maybe, you know, level two kind of stuff, but because you don't need to do a wait and promises, you could do that in your JavaScript as well. But I find this to be uh, just an easier way to put the code together. I, I, I agree completely. And when I first saw Svelte, that was actually one of the things that really just blew my mind of just seeing that because of just that, that kind of just real simple elegance of, of uh, you know, display your waiting message, here's the, the results, and then here's an error message should something go wrong. Because trying to do that with just, you know, normal JavaScript HTML without, without a framework or trying to do that in a lot of other frameworks can get really tricky. And like if you're using function-based components in... Um, uh, in who's and what's it in in React, like just trying to get it to do an asynchronous call at at load time uh, right now is a little bit tricky. So the fact that all of that's just right there, and and again in a relatively intuitive fashion of await, oh, here's my loading message, then here's the content I want to display, catch, and then here's the error message is just it's it's spectacular. I love this. I'm so thrilled that you put that in there. Yeah, it's nice because I'm a big fan, by the way, of demos. Uh, demos are demos. Let's be honest. It's not production code. There's other things to do to harden your application. But I'm a big fan of because people grab your demos and they run them, showing them how errors work. Because I don't know about you, but every app I've ever written has had an error in it somewhere. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't show how to deal with errors, people don't know how to deal with them. So it's nice to, you know, I could have just cut this code out and made it simpler. Yeah, the app would still run. But now we get to see how simple it is to actually include some kind of error handling. I agree completely. Yep. Yeah. So let me jump out of Zen mode. Uh, I'm going to go Command Shift P again, or F1, and view down to here. So there's our heroes Svelte list. Uh, I mentioned that there was a hero detail. Remember that on line two? Mm -hmm. Let's see where that's used in this file. You'll notice at the bottom of the page down here. This is, let me minimize some stuff so we can see it all together. Here's our list of heroes. There's our UL on line 26. Here's our iteration where we're going through and creating each hero and displaying them. Now, if we want to know what page we're looking at at this point, it's over here. This is basically rendering Luke and C3PO, etc. What's happening is we're, we're looping through and displaying them here on hero name. But when somebody is selected, we want to show that selection. So at the bottom of the page, when I select Obi-Wan Kenobi or uh, Aunt Beru here, we want the name and the birth year to be displayed and then this text at the bottom. The way we make that work is in the LI, we've got this on click. So on colon is basically saying we have an event handler we want to attach to this LI, this HTML element. And the, hand, the event we want to attach it to is the click event. And these are events that are just browser events, DOM events. And the code you want to run, and I could have put this in a function, but I was trying to keep it simple. Arguably, it's harder this way. We leave it to you, you know, to figure it out. The curly brace means there's code. And here is basically a Lambda function saying, when click happens, run a function. I'm not passing any parameters in because I don't need them. 
and the function's return value is set the selected hero variable to hero. Let's think about what that's doing. The hero is the hero I'm on. So it's whatever row you're on, Obi-Wan Kenobi, R2D2, whatever, that's the hero. And I wanna set that to a variable that's at the component level called selected hero, which is up here on line six. Notice it's blank by default. Now, once that selected hero is set, nothing else happens here, but down on line 45, we're saying, if there is a selected hero, then show the hero detail, which is why we're seeing the details. So if I look at this app full screen again, if I refresh, well, I have to run the app to do that, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go run the app. Minor details. <laughs> Sometimes it helps to run your code, Christopher. <laughs> TIL. All right, so there's our app. And you saw how quick that was. I did it fast. It's NPM run dev. I reran it. Now notice there's nothing at the bottom. That hero detail is not there. But if I select, let's go, go select Vader. Now you see it turned yellow and this name and birth year appeared at the bottom because now the selected hero exists. And every time I change the selected hero variable, reactivity is kicking in and letting the app know that we have to paint this stuff differently now. 